Hi, welcome back. I've got to say, and if this looks a bit similar to somebody else, Eric Curtis, N. Curtis on YouTube, look him up. Eric, you get everything right. Everything. You're good, you're good. This is part three of a video of a project that started two years ago. Two years ago, I think the bags under the eyes were smaller two years ago. And it's an Olympic torch, Paralympic torch project. And I, I struggled through it. Um, COVID, family health, my mental health, all sorts. At this point, I just want to say all those people who have supported me with buy me a coffee. Oh, crikey, thank you. You, you don't know what it means. It makes the day. Just, just a coffee makes my day. It's brilliant. And if it's more than that, blows my mind. So you guys keep me going. So thank you for that. This is part three. This is the final part of the cabinet. And I had done a start to it, but it wasn't very really good. And we're just going to jump straight into where the other two videos left off. If it was really clever, I'd know how to stick a link up there or up here or... I don't know how to do that. But Eric does. Eric knows how to do it. He's younger than me. Thanks for the coffee, guys. Appreciate it. I hope you like the video. Comments more than welcome. I love comments. I love to chat to you guys. I love to see what's going on. Hear what's going on. Hear what you've done. Straight into it. Dovetails, I think. Have a look. It's not dovetails, it's fitting the hinges and using a router, using a router plane to fit the hinges. It's it's worth looking at. You'll like this. Thanks. Right, let's get these cramps off and see what it all looks like. Actually, before I do anything, I think I'm just going to saw through there. Let me get this, uh, let me get a saw and we'll take that off. I've got this little Veritas saw this side up. For just this sort of job, so let me just get myself set up. Bit of cleaning up. All right, there we go. That's what it was sitting on. All right, let's lift it up. Right, there you go. So this now goes into the cabinet. Pyeongchang faces me. So you put it on the pin. That facing you. Oh, that, oh, that finds its... Yeah, that's good. That's good. Now much do you have to lift it? Now it's wedging on. So there's going to be a piece of timber behind there just to stop it at the right point. Because... Because of that very reason, it's going to be banging around. But that's great. Oh, I'm pleased with that. Oh, flipping heck, I'm pleased with that. It's it's strong enough to look. It's sort of bouncing around. I'm. What do you think? What do you think of that? Oh, I think that's working pretty good. Oh, great. Okay, so clean the glue off, put a piece around the back and clean all the glue off, tidy it up. And that's looking great. Oh, it looks so good in there. And that angle, yeah, that angle looks better than dead straight up. It would look just weird. Okay, brilliant. I've made this really awkward little piece which sits flush with that one there, flush all round here, and that stops it going on too far. And the idea is that this will get sanded and cleaned up, but that, that will be the stop for the torch. So yeah, let's get that glued on. Okay, that's it glued up. Looking really good and it comes off quite easily now. Because that was the problem because it's tapered. So now, oh, 
Oh, it doesn't want to. Oh, flip it. I might have to just take a bit of sandpaper to it. How come that was easy a couple of seconds ago? Oh. Well, there you go. How come? There's something going on there. Oh, okay. Maybe it's easier because I'm pulling it. Maybe it's easier just from the bottom. Yeah, maybe there's just... Maybe I'm not putting it off at the right angle. I'm putting pressure on that. Whereas if you just lift it. Oh, okay. That's great. There you go. Yay! Looking good. Stanley number 71. And I've set it up so that... Let me try and hold it and show you. Look, luckily the hinge fits between there. I've set it up so that it's getting to the bottom edge there. Now I just need to adjust it a little bit more to the depth of the hinge and then that will be able to be used on here. Let me just show you on this one. And I'll be able to do that and make sure that that is all cut away. So don't just think, oh, you've got to chisel this out and whatever. You can still use your router to make sure that some bits are right. And I'm doing that to make sure that the door sits flush with the frame that way. Height-wise, it's located. Depth, it's done to the bottom of here. But to ensure it's flush on the front, set that back. I'll do that now. And if I can come down here not easy to hold a phone and a router I, I, I've just that's it that's out to the depth all right let's go to the middle one which I'm not happy with so just make sure this that it's the bottom is flat see that so now I can make sure you see that that bit of oak there look at it it's flicking around it's it's not nice there's a little bit in that corner that needs to come out. I don't want to break that off because it'll break, it'll just break. So let's get that corner out. And this one, there you go. That's it there in that corner. Okay, in the middle, it's just that corner again. And that will now, I'll be able to get in there with a chisel, put it in there. And sorry about the camera work, it's not easy. Put that in there, chisel that away. Go in this way. And then just make sure it's chopped off at the end. wouldn't normally do it I'd do it a bit smoother than this because I'd have two hands there you go and I wouldn't twist like that but that's better I'm happy with that I'll just put that there take that corner out and take that corner out push the chisel in there back to that let's just push that down again and then in this one this one was okay I've done this one before right there you go so use a router come on thank you so you can use a router in there like that to set the depth of your hinges and that means it'll all be flush because it's equal to that fr that frame that's sitting there so that's great so I'm getting somewhere, I'm using a 5mm drill and the reason I'm filming this is to remind me and the 5mm drill has got a hole up inside there just behind that washer and there's a 5mm hole down here so this now pivots on that Dovetailing the, which is this, it's the top right hand side into there. And I just wanted to show you something. I mark up the dovetails like this. I 
hide little dots away. In fact, on the end of that one is a red dot in the middle so that I can quickly identify. It saves writing all over the pieces of wood, but it means I can quickly identify where something is going, make sure it's the right way around. This is, um, this is a tad awkward because, because the grain's going to an angle. These little corners are easily broken off. And um, I've just knocked this in. In fact, let me do it again and I'll show you. And there it is knocked in. Locked a little corner off there. This this can happen. But the thing that I was really pleased with is the fact that I put... Can I do this? I put the square on it. And even with the weight of the piece of wood, nothing on the end, nothing on there, nothing supporting it. It's already square. It's sitting square. And this is down to marking out. This is how I mark out. And I love getting a really sharp knife from the marking out on my dovetails. But anyhow, that's done. Just got to do this one and then the outer frame is done. I want to show you how I mark them up, the dovetails. I've just marked, I've just marked these up and had that on, sitting on top of it as normal with a very sharp knife. And there's an order I do things. So I take the knife and I do the right hand side of each one first. And then I do the left of each one. And I, I mark it a number of times. And as you can see, that's quite a cut. And then I mark down the outside. And this is just a parallel line to work to. It isn't necessarily the line. Once I've started making the cut, I come down. Then another thing that I do that is slightly different. Um, I've got a, a beautiful cutting gauge set up, very sharp cutting gauge. I haven't got a wheel gauge. I find this blade on here is, uh, is sufficient. It does a good job. It cuts either way. It works for me. I like it. And what I do then is I just mark a darker line just above the cut because that's got a nice cut. So if you listen to this, it find that click, listen, that click is the blade falling into the knife cut. And the knife line then is great for the chisel to chisel off. So I will cut down to the black line and then I will finish that last quarter of a mil half a millimetre, we'll be finished with the chisel. If you want to support me, buy me a coffee is my preferred method of you supporting me. They take the smallest percentage. It just makes more sense to me. It should make more sense to you. Beading's in. And I put these little, so there's little tiny spots of glue on there. Not much, enough to pop it away if I want to get it out, but not pinned. Tiny spots of glue. Every now and then, then, across there, two across there, two across the bottom, every three or four inches up here. These were just little bits of wood just in there to hold it all together while it's in the right place and stop it all falling out. So that's glued in now, the beading's in. So that's better. I've got problems with this top corner now. And you don't want to hear that. Anyhow, it's close here. It's tight there. There's a gap here. Something's in twist as well. So I've got to put a bit more structure behind this. And that's what I'm now going to work on. This side seems all right, but it's going to have some structure behind there as well. Um, and I've got to get all these gaps straight before I dovetail it, because once that's jointed, I can't really get in there easily. So that's got to be sorted. I just walked along here and I thought, oh, I should show you what it's looking like. It, it's still, these dovetails, they've still got to come apart, that carcass as to that. But I'm having problems with it and I've got to plane some more off here. But one of the things I really need to do is I need to get this glass door closed and not moving. And the idea was that there's no handles, no catches. 
That was Drew's idea, no handles, no catches, and he mentioned magnet. So what I've got going here is a little square that goes into that corner like that. I've just glued this up. A millimetre under there will be a magnet. And as you can see, what I've done is I've used epoxy and the epoxy when I've cramped it up. The good thing about putting a cramp in is the magnet comes tight up against the back of that piece of wood, which is great. Um, but it's gone down the adhesive, the resin, has gone down the pores, the cells of the oak, and it's oozed out here and it's oozed out there. Anyhow, the plan is to put that in that corner and then I will... Well, you ready for this? I will cut a slot into, into here, like you would uh, a spline. And I'm going to cut all the way down and I'm going to get the magnet to sit just in the right place there so that I can then put a spline in to hold it in place. So it'll be glued in place, but uh, I'll ensure it's in exactly the same place in there. And then, yeah, glue the spline in, which will be cool. So that's that. Ignore this. This is just some bit of felt holding it in place for the time being. These dovetails were a pain in the neck. Of course they were because they're going like that, which is the wrong way, but it's the only way my head could make it work. And, and anyhow, and this needs some more taking off it here, off this edge for that to, the gap's not correct yet. So I'm messing with the gap. And the only way to do that is to keep taking these sides off, planing it down, put them back on again. It's the most long winded way of fitting something that I've ever known. But there you go. I'm getting there. So I'm just trialing the magnet and how the how much power the magnet has got. So if I lift that up, we can see that the magnet is inside a round hole, but lying flat. So I'll flatten the hole out inside. And that, if I put it there, and then start offering it up, yeah, you can feel it pull down, but it's um, it definitely works. And I've got the height right. Okay, let's do it to that one then. Right, I shouldn't start with right, should I? Welcome back. I've put some structure around it. The dovetails are looking a little bit uh, hammered. They've been in and out so many times; it's unreal. I've got a piece of timber here that's trying to bow up. So it's going to have a moulding round the top, which will tidy this up and hide the dovetails, which is a shame. They're not bad, but as I say, they've been in a few times. Um, and the re what I'm doing really is just showing the structure on the back here, because I didn't want back panels. I don't want to use that much timber. I don't want to make it super heavy and waste loads of timber. So the idea is I've got a little framework here, which is just dry fitted at the moment. And I think I'm going to put a cross member in a diagonal bracing to help. There's another timber going to go on here to make this into a box. I've got extra timber around here to stiffen all this up and make that good and it's all working. So I'm pleasantly surprised because confidence has been low lately but um, it's looking pretty good. I'm, I'm, I'm actually smiling and quite pleased. I'm, I'm loving the fact that right behind there is part of the cabinet and it's close it's not too close it's close enough it's close enough but it's not too close it all works everything's been allowed for uh on the original drawing i did on a piece of cardboard ages ago so yeah it's um I, i've just opened the door i've done with all to open anyhow the door opens i should show you the the work that's gone into the door to making the magnet here and there touch there are no catches no catches no knobs no and and actually what that is taking is um it's it's getting to about four mil and then it just gently pulls it so you can open it anywhere just put your and, and actually it's just a bit of pressure that way 
and when it's on the wall, it'll be great. So um, I've still got some cleaning up to do the front, a um, couple of gaps to sort out, but that's all later. And and I'm feeling a little bit of relief because, oh, because as I say, confidence has been a bit... But it's getting there. It's getting there. It's looking good. Looking really good. So uh, here are my... French cleats and I'll show you qu quickly where the French cleats go. The reason for this moulding, this timber across here is because the French cleats will sit against it. These were painted black on this edge so you don't see it. And But they'll be sitting there, there'll be another one over here um, at the top, then there'll be another one down the bottom somewhere and where I've got this diagonal coming through here. Let's see what goes on with that but yep. Yeah, Four at the top, all the way around the top, using this timber as a bearer, as support. Um, yeah, 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 quite happy. And look what's in the corner. I love the fact that it's got this hidden secret. I mean, this is typical me, isn't it? Um, more detail. The more you look at it, the more you find more detail. So, yeah, it's going to be great. I'm, I'm, I'm feeling like I'm getting somewhere. So this is the last time, I shouldn't start with so, should I? This will be the last time cramps are on here. What I'm doing is I'm putting another timber around the bottom because the moulding hangs off the bottom. I'm actually putting a, making it into a framework. I've done similar to the top. Similar here, but this is the top so it doesn't need to be as flush. I want the bottom to be flush so that if you put it on a flat surface, on a horizontal surface, It'll stand without tilting over because of that moulding. So it just makes the structure stronger. But it's gone through a lot of sanding today. Loads more sanding done. Uh, glue removal, which seems to be my thing. I seem to forget, not spot where I've left a bit of glue. And um, yeah, it's looking really good. It's looking really good. So uh, those will stay on here for today. Clean this up tomorrow. I might even get the finish, start getting the finish on tomorrow, which would be great because once I start getting the finish on, I'm days away from getting it sorted. So there you go. Before we go any further, I just want to talk about the back of the cabinet. This, I just didn't want to be straight flat planks. I wanted it to be interesting. I wanted just minimal, I'll keep the weight down. It needed to be a secret so that when you open that door, it's just like, where, what's going on in here as well? So what I did was I went back and looked at the Pyeongchang Winter Olympic Paralympic Games relay badge that was worn on the tracksuit and it was to promote the relay itself. The diagonals I love and as you can see I used those diagonals. It just felt right to me. And I knew that once I'd started assembling it, it would just look, get better and better. And I think it looks great. And it's D-Day. Tools all packed up, ready to go cabinet's looking good i got the finish on it which i didn't film but french cleats in place in black so you won't notice those the lattice work looks brilliant i'm chuffed with the lattice work and uh, inside it looks just brilliant i love the inside then if we shut it there it closes great the oak looks wonderful it'll match the things that they've got in their house so they'll be pleased with that Mouldings top and bottom, very similar. I'm really pleased with it. Hottest day of the year, and I'm putting a cabinet up. Didn't get any video, but got these great still shots. And let me know what you think. Thanks for watching. If you want to support me, buy me a coffee is my preferred method of you supporting me. They take the smallest percentage. It just makes more sense to me. It should make more sense to you. Thanks for watching.